Welcome everybody to video five of Being Innovator with Flow. If you're joining us new, we are going step-by-step step to build an automated business process from start to finish. So watch each video, share your progress online, and get a chance to win some really fun prizes. All right, so in video four, we really covered the basics of building a flow in Flow Builder. For video five, we're gonna learn about distributing your flow so your users can really take advantage of what you've built. And also, we're gonna look at how we can update the look and feel of our flows so that we can really drive adoption. So I'm super excited to hear from Principal Admin Evangelist, Leanne Rimmel, and Senior Admin Evangelist, Mark Bazeman, about how we can make some of those awesome adjustments to our flow to make it super useful for our users. Let's hear from them. Thanks, Rebecca. And welcome back, awesome admins, to video five of Be an Innovator with Flow. We've loved seeing your feedback so far, everything you've been building. And in today's video, we're gonna be focusing on things to think about and consider as you implement your flow screen. So where you can put it, things that you should be thinking about. But we've done a lot so far in the last four videos. Mark, what have we been building so far? Yeah, let's recap. So we started with our business process, right? Understanding our key stakeholders, understanding the different steps in our business process. Then we built out a screen to capture the data. Then we connected the screen to actual records in Salesforce. And that brings us to right now. Right, so we've accomplished a ton, we've got our flows, we're almost ready to implement them, but there's things that we wanna think about first, right? Like so we've got our flows, we've, we saved them, we debugged them, and the first thing we wanna think about is where will our users access this flow? So this is something that we spent time when we thought about requirements, we thought about process documentation of our flow when we did our whiteboarding exercise, is where will our users really encounter the flow? Right. And so talk a little bit about why that's important. Yeah, so who are our key stakeholders, right? If you remember, we talked about that's gonna be our project managers and our sales users. So when we're thinking about where we're gonna put the flow in Salesforce, we need to understand where are those users gonna be interacting with this information. And right now our flow is built specifically, it takes an input variable, which is the current project that a, a project manager is looking at or a sales user is looking at. So that's really important when we're thinking about all the different places to put our flow. So Leanne, could you talk a little bit about where a flow could yeah. go? in general? So one of the things that I was really excited about with Lightning and with Lightning App Builder was the flow distribution model that we can have. So it's the flow standard component that if you've been in Lightning App Builder, it's a standard component on the left, flow standard component. And it, if you've built flows in the past or worked with visual workflows in the past, there was a much different distribution model. Sometimes it involved like direct URLs and there's a little bit more legwork involved. But the great thing about the flow standard component is it makes it really easy and also very flexible to surface your flows and make them visible to your users. So it's a standard component, which means that we can use it in many of the places, almost all the places that we use standard components. So what are some of the places that I yeah. might want to do it? So we can build it in our, we can add the flow standard component to utility bar. Okay. So if you had a flow, for example, that you wanted users to be able to access from anywhere they are within an app. Like it might be an app specific flow, but it's not as record specific, or you're gonna have a different kind of record engagement. You might add that to the utility bar. So you just can pop it up in the bottom of your utility bar. If it's something that you want your users to encounter maybe on a profile or app level, and maybe every time they log into Salesforce, or you want them to be able to go and visit it, it might be something you put on the homepage. Interesting. Um, so you can add it to the homepage as well. You can also add it to an app page. So we've um, often had fun building lightning app pages, especially if you're building kind of like a mobile experience, that's one of the options there to surface it as part of an app page experience. Mm -hmm. Now, all of those that I mentioned don't automatically bring in a record ID because none of those are record specific, Got right? It. So when you mentioned have our variable was available for input, so you can still work with records and do like record updates and things like that in those flows, but it would be a different kind of flow. You'd wanna have a flow that like brought in records, maybe had to get records to bring in all the projects, you'd select what project you wanted to update, things like that. Got it. So it's a different type of flow because none of those are you know specific to a record page. So for our use case, for our use where case, we are looking at a specific project and we mm -hmm. need to create a feedback record that's related to that project. Yeah, exactly. We would add that to the record page. So 
Um, because this is an experience that we wanted our users to have, all of the different types of users, so it wasn't really profile specific, right? Like we said, we want our sales right. users, we want our project users. But maybe I have other users that I don't want to have access to give feedback. Yeah, so you, you would have that surfaced on the record page so that what we really wanted, the behavior that we wanted to encourage is that every time a user is on like working with a project, they are kind of encouraged to give that feedback. That's for this user scenario, that's what we're working on. So we would add this flow screen to our record page. Got it. Now some other kind of implementation considerations is you can also add a flow as an action. So if you're adding, for example, a record specific action, you can have flow as the type create a flow action. And so you can launch a flow from the actions bar on your pages. So that means the user would have to take some sort of action, they would have to click yeah. to start the flow rather than having the flow start just by going Yeah, so record. one of the important kind of differences there when you're thinking about should I add this as, you know, to the actions bar, or should I add this as a component, is do you want the flow to launch every time the page is loaded? So if you want the flow to launch every time the page is loaded and if a screen is like the first step of your flow, then you would likely add that as a right. component on the page. If you want there to be some user interaction, right, and you don't necessarily want it to launch every time, but you want it to be kind of things that are available to your users, you might add that as an action. So an example there is um, if you've done any of like our lightning or flow tutorials, if you were to say create a flow that emailed all of the contacts on an account. I would right. not want that to happen. You don't every want that to just happen. I looked at an account. Yeah, because probably be the bad. first step is in a screen. The first step like does some things there, and also you wouldn't want that to launch every time you opened a, a account record page. You want that to be a kind of a user initiated. So that's some kind of fundamental things to think about. That's different there. Um, now, when you've decided where you're going to put your flow, you also have to make sure the right users have access to it. Right. It's what you mentioned, right? Like making so sure we're anyone. My sales users and my project managers, yes, mm -hmm. but like not my service users and not my, you know, my marketing folks. They definitely shouldn't see this. Right. So there's a few ways you can control visibility of a flow like this. So one is that you can control it on the, the field level or the page level, the same as you're controlling any sort of your visibility on the page level with the dynamic component filters. You can com uh, filter by the profile type and things like that of who's viewing the record. You can the same way that I would do that on any other component on a lightning. Yeah, any other page. component. Um, but then one thing that sometimes users run into is, or admins run into is, this user can't see the flow. I rolled it out, I added it to their page, like they can't see it, they can't launch it. It is also a user level permission. Got it. So you wanna make sure you're, you're uh, granting the right users access to flows and it's um, not a flow specific user level permission, it's just access to flows in general. And so that's on the user level. So it's either on a user record, you would say like, you know, enable as flow user or create a permission set for that. So it's just important consideration to make sure the right people have access to it, Got it and you're rolling out the pages kind of in the right way and using that visibility. So once we know where we're going to put it, uh, the tools we're going to use to put it there, the right users will have access. We also want to be considerate about what the user experience is. Right. So um, some of you may have seen a blog post about emoji or a did you know video about emoji, but one of the ways that you can increase adoption is to put emoji, you know, everywhere, all the places where it makes sense. Um, so let's add emoji to our flow. Yeah, let's go ahead and dive in and we're gonna yeah, add some emojis, really fine tune that experience and also you know, make sure we're adjusting the properties in the flow to uh, give our users the best experience. Sure. So let's take a look. So now that we've decided where we're gonna be surfacing our flow and what that user experience is gonna be, let's go ahead and jump back into the flow we've been building to really fine tune that user experience on the screen itself. So we're back in the flow that we've been building and we've got our feedback screen, we've got our create records element, it's all connected. So the flow works, which we know because we debugged it. However, let's jump back into the feedback screen and really make sure that when we think about this being surfaced on the project page, as we talked about with the app builder, that it has exactly the look and feel that we want and that our users are you know, encouraged to engage with it in a really intuitive way and there's nothing confusing. So the first thing I see when I open my screen element, I've got again my canvas with my preview of what the screen will look like. I've got my header, right? So if I click on the header, my screen properties on the right are letting me know everything about this screen and the header is part of that. So right now we have it to show both the header and the footer. Now, you don't always have to hide the header, but also because we've got display text, we might wanna think about, do we really need this header? Is it just extra text on the page? Or is this something that we can get rid of and really rely on that display text to coach our users through what they should be doing? 
I feel like we, our users are gonna be really um, encouraged and, and enabled by the display text and we don't need kind of more, basically more characters on screen than we have to have. So we're gonna get rid of that header there. So we can adjust that look and feel on the right of the properties here on our screen properties um, for you know whether or not we show header or show footer. Now, if we were to get rid of show footer, then we don't have any navigation buttons. And since this is a screen component that's going to be encouraging our users to submit information, we want them to be able to hit that button of finish. We want them to be able to actually finish this flow and submit the information which is gonna create the record. So we don't wanna get rid of the footer, so we're gonna make sure that's checked, but we do want to fine tune the navigation items that are available. Um, right now we've got pause, previous, and finish are available. Now because this is a single screen flow, this isn't a flow where they're going through multiple steps, we don't need that previous button because there really is no previous screen. And so if it's not something your users are gonna ever need to click, it's better to get rid of it because it can add confusion. And this is even outside of flow screens, like anywhere in Salesforce, if it's not something your users are gonna be engaging with or need to engage with, there's no reason to add kind of complication for them by having it on the screen. So we're gonna get rid of the previous button. We're also going to get rid of the pause button because this isn't something, again, that this flow, this flow isn't, um, a multi-step flow, it's not something that uh, is kind of relevant for this flow and it might cause confusion. So we're gonna uncheck pause. Now we do wanna keep the next or finish because we want them to be able to finish this flow and submit. Because when they finish this flow, the connector takes us from the screen element to the create records element. And so when they click finish, it's going to go to that next step in the flow and actually create the record. So we also can kind of fine tune the look and feel of what's on the screen. So we've adjusted the screen properties but we can also go ahead and take a look at um, some of those fields and how they're displayed and make it a little more visually engaging. So Mark mentioned emojis and we do love emojis. So on the label here, we can go ahead and maybe add an emoji for requires escalation. I like to use the, uh, the little um, siren light for uh, escalation or some sort of red flag. It just lets your users know like that's what we're doing here. We're saying like this needs uh, attention or light on this. Now it's important you make sure I didn't adjust the API name. So the label is what's displayed to your users, but we're not gonna add an emoji to the API name because we do it on the label. So let's also go into the details. Let's just make this kind of a more fun and engaging space. So on the details, on the text, on the label, we can also add another emoji that kind of lets them know, hey, we want you to tell us more information here. So we'll add like a little speaker. And so this, these are just ways that we can make the flow screen really visually engaging. We can make sure that we like how the information is ordered on the screen so we can reorder how our input uh, components are displayed. And just thinking about where is this gonna be displayed on the record page? Where will our users see it? Um, how do we kind of quickly help them arrive at the coaching and the kind of instruction that they need to fill this out in the right way and make it really fun and engaging? So I feel good about that. Let's go ahead and click done. Now, we always wanna make sure we're regularly saving our flow. And to get a quick preview, you can also jump in to debug again, our favorite place, and you can see that preview of exactly what that'll look like. So that's how with just a few clicks, we can fine tune the kind of look and feel of our screen now that we've considered and thought about exactly where our users are gonna be engaging with this flow and what that should look like in the context of the record page. Awesome, okay. So that was a fantastic demo. Thank you, Leanne. We've spent time thinking about where our users are gonna use the flow. We've improved the user experience, and now we're almost ready to activate our flow. Yes, exactly, Mark. So thanks so much for going over some of those business things that we should be thinking about as we're rolling this flow out to our users, which I promise we're gonna do next time. But before then, we wanna see all of the awesome screens that you've been building and how you've been fine tuning those screens with emojis, with modifying the screen properties to really make them as useful as possible for your users. So we're very excited to see the ways that you have fine tuned and optimized your flow screens. And we can't wait to see you next time when we deploy our flow. Yes. Back to you, Rebecca. Awesome. Thank you, Leanne and Mark, for sharing those best practices for building our flow. Seems like the possibilities with flow are endless. To summarize, my main key takeaways are one, to think about the user experience when designing your flow. We can update the screen to be more user friendly by removing unnecessary buttons and text and adding things like emojis. Second, decide where to surface your flow. There are many places we can surface our flows, like the utility bar, the home page, the record page, but you have to decide what makes sense for your use case. 
Third, ensure the right users have access to your flow. You can do that by um, adding the permission to their profile. All right, so now it's your turn. Share your newly optimized screen from the debugger and don't hold back. We want to see your creativity. We want to see those emojis. And then, of course, share this on Twitter using hashtag BeanInnovator to enter to win. All entries for video 5 must be completed and tweeted with the hashtag by midnight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on April 30th. Restrictions do apply, so see rules for details. And of course, remember to check back to that trail mix as you follow along for more resources and um, helpful guidance. And then join us for video six, our final video of the Be an Innovator series, where we will learn how to activate and implement our flow. See you next time. Awesome,